Hi everybody, it's Steven here for Bland Designs and today I thought I'd do a crap video and crap if you've never seen my videos before under this title stands for creative relaxation and play and it's where I just muck about in real time uh, with some products to see what I get. Sometimes they work out fantastically and sometimes they're just crap. So today what I'm going to try is something that I saw on YouTube on several different channels uh, one being the uh, Jelly Print uh, Plate channel and another Joggles, J-O-J-J-L-E-S. And I think I'm going to do a mini review of their YouTube station uh, in next week's vlog. Um, so stay tuned for that. But uh, both were doing uh, Jelly Plate Printing. And if you don't know what Jelly Plate Printing is, it's this. It's a silicone plate. Uh, they look like this. They come in different sizes. This is uh, one manufacturer of them. There are other ones on the market. Uh, Gel Press, I think, is another one. Uh, this is the one that I started with, this company, and I really like them. I've never used the Gel Press, so I'm not sure, but I think you get about the same results. Anyways, it's a silicone pad, and you apply paint to it and roll it out, and you make monoprints. Monoprints means you only get one print each time and you really can't duplicate them they're very different now usually when I do these I use acrylic paints um, however I saw one YouTube video um, the one from the jelly print or jelly plate people using watercolors um, now watercolors and acrylic paint have different consistencies obviously and because it's a silicone um, watercolor will beat up on it and you would think you wouldn't get much of an effect from it. But according to their YouTube video about it, you get really neat watercolor effects. And so that's what I'm going to try to achieve here. Um, that's in the first half of this video. My second experiment is going to be with alcohol inks. And, and there goes my email, of course. Should have turned that off. Um, they used alcohol inks on top of hand sanitizer, like this kind of stuff, which is a really interesting idea. So today I'm going to play around with these two techniques. And as I said, I'm going to start first with ordinary watercolors. Now I've got my set of watercolors here and I happen to be using Koi watercolors, which are a very good brand of watercolors and they're also fairly expensive. This is my travel set. And I'm going to use a water brush. And I got a paper towel off here to the side to clean up the water brush between the two. And just give me a second. I want to turn off the speaker on my other computer. Because if I don't turn off the speaker on this, we're going to be constantly hearing my email going off. There, I've got that set. Speaking of noises, don't be surprised if you hear my Clark clock go off at some point, too. Okay, so here we go. Um, I've already done a little, it looks like I have to do it again. I'm just going to wet my watercolors a little bit. And I don't know, um, I like blue. I always go to blue. That's my go-to color. And I'm just going to paint it on. This is what they did in the video. And you can see, well, I don't know if the video is uh, showing it very well, but unlike acrylic paints, this is um, just beating up. Let's try a little yellow in here too. And I, I'm just kind of, I'll get green out of that yellow as well, but that's okay. And uh, let's try a third color here. Let's try a little ready orange. Now I'm not really sure how much I should be putting on here. Um, because it is beating up, it's kind of hard to tell, but we'll see. Now, for the paper, I'm just going to use ordinary cardstock, the kind of stuff you buy at Michael's. I don't know what that is in poundage. I think they're only about uh, 80 pound. It's not the best cardstock in the world, but it'll serve our purposes for this. And I'm just going to do what I normally would do for jelly print. And I've got a dry brayer here. I, I, you can use your hands. I like using a brayer. So I'm just rolling it across here. Let's see what we're going to get. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. 
it's definitely got a watercolor effect to it. I'm going to set that aside. And I still got some on here. I'm going to try a ghost print. I have a feeling I'm not going to get much out of it as a ghost print because I think the paper absorbed the water pretty fast. But that's okay. Yeah, just as I suspected, I didn't get much out of that. All right, let's let's uh, let's try some more. Let's add another... I'm just using two shades of yellow here. Oops, there was my cap off my water brush, but that's no big deal. All right, so I've got that. Now I'm going to place another color on here, and I think I'm going to use um, I'm gonna add, uh, this kind of green here. Again, I'm just sort of randomly it all around here okay now I'm going to take that one that I just did a moment ago and now it's watercolor so the water on here will probably reactivate some of the color on this card but I'm just going to lay it down press it well, that's not bad at all now, I'm noticing though I'm getting some browns because my colors are getting mixed here a little bit. So, should be careful with that as well. Not getting much running, but it is giving me a watercolor effect. Now, I'm just going to spritz lightly on top of what's already there. I'm going to take this. This was one I did the ghost print on. I'm going to try another ghost print, but this time I've put more water onto whatever paint was left on here. and see what happens. Well, that's not bad. Kind of pastel -y. Okay, so another thing that I saw them do was they actually drew sort of a design with using um, a color. So I've got this one over here that's a ghost print. It's kind of light. I'm going to use some blue. And I'm just going to do some circles. Do some off the page as well. Oops. And um, I think I'll just draw sort of a, a connecting line maybe. I'll do them in this red. So I'm just drawing a random design on here. And maybe I'll put a little dot of red in the center of each circle. Okay. Let's take this ghost print and let's see what we get this time. Yeah, you can sort of see my pattern on there. That's kind of that's kind of cool. They seem to dry fairly fast too. This paper really absorbs the color. Now I'm going to um, I'm just going to wet this. I'm just going to take my water brush and I'm just going to wipe it all the way through. Now I might be getting a little bit. I'm getting kind of yeah. Um, maybe not a good idea. 
I don't think that's a good idea because what I'm getting is brown because I mixed the colors. And but just for, I've got lots of paper. Let's give it a try and just see what happens. But I think uh, well, worst th worst case scenario here, it just cleans off my jelly plate, so that's okay. But I think I'm just going to get mud on this one. Well, no, I didn't quite get mud, but that could be a background. I could do other layers on top of that. So let's put that aside. Okay, I'm going to take a baby wipe grab one and I'm just going to wipe this down a little bit now you can see that I have a bit of a tinge of green on my jelly plate but that's from I stained it with something that I was using at one point this won't come off on anything that I create here but don't worry about that if your jelly plate gets to the point where it's not really transparent anymore it's not going to bother you okay so what am I going to do I want to try it on some deli paper. Deli paper is a lot thinner. Also, deli paper has a bit of a more of a waxy texture to it, so I'm not sure how well that'll work. I mean, the cardstock absorbs the paint, but the um, the jelly deli paper surface kind of like the. Um, jelly plate itself. The watercolor would probably beat up on it. Um, I have a limited palette here of colors, but... And I don't know, I'm just dabbing things here. Maybe I'll add a little blue. Okay, let's give that a, a go with the deli paper and see what we get. It's kind of, well, of course, because the deli paper is very thin, it's not abs at actually absorbing through the deli paper, but the deli paper is going a little bit transparent. That's why we can see what's underneath. Okay. Hmm. A little more subtle. Than what's on the paper but still kind of nice that would you know you rip that up into pieces that would look good in an art journal so okay so you can put it on uh, deli paper and let's let's just take a take another sheet of deli paper here and let's do a, a ghost actually I'm going to just wet it a little bit No, I didn't pick up too much at all. I've got this ghost. Okay, this is back to cardstock, but that's that one that gave me sort of that gray background. Just to clean this up, I'm just going to put it down and see what happens. Well, that's kind of interesting, too. Okay, so... Watercolors will work, and they give you a watercolor effect. They will work on deli paper, although I think they work better on just cardstock. Now, if you were to do this on a piece of um, watercolor, actually, bear with me for a second. Let me grab some watercolor paper. I've got some Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor cardstock. This has a rough side and has a smooth side, and I think I'll use smooth side to start with. So it's a little smaller here than my plate, but that's not a big deal. So let's see, let's uh, lay down some color. I'll just put it up in the one half because the sheet's a little smaller.
I'm just mixing in a little bit of yellow. In fact, I'm mucking up my yellow in my thing here. So, and maybe put in one other color. I'm trying to clean off my brush over here at the other side, where you can't see it. I've got a paper towel. That's what I'm doing. I'm wiping this into the paper towel, squeezing a little water through until it runs clear. And we'll try a little red. So here's my, I'm going to put the smooth side down. Mm -hmm. Works pretty well. Actually, it's a little bit more brilliant on the, uh, on the watercolor paper, which, yeah, that's to be expected because it is watercolor paper. So that works pretty good. And uh, let's try it on the, the what's left on there on the rough side. So I'm going to grab a, a new sheet of this paper. And I've got the rough side. I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to add any more color. I'm just going to wet that. And I'm going to try it on the rough side. Now that got a little bit more uh, watercolor. In fact, the colors are still moving on that. I made it fairly juicy with the spray bottle. But again, it's a nice watercolor effect. And I think that would be very usable. Okay, so this is another potential here for making backgrounds. Um, watercolors are a little less messy than using acrylic paints, although the acrylic paints dry very fast when you use it with this, but just gives you a, a watercolor style effect if you were looking for a quick uh, kind of background. You know, you make a bunch of these up to put in your art journal, and we saw that it works on deli paper, it works on watercolor paper, it works on regular cardstock. So it definitely has potential there. So that was the first technique. The second technique I want to try involves alcohol inks and hand sanitizer. So I'm just going to get cleaned up here a little bit and I'll be back and we'll try that process. Okay, the second technique I want to show you that I saw, and this is the one that was on the YouTube channel for Joggles, um, was using hand sanitizer as your base and then putting alcohol inks on top of it. So she recommended that you put a fair amount on, hope I've got enough of my bottle, and you can spread it out with a brayer or you can spread it out with a flat edge, a credit card. So I'm just going to use an old credit card here. And um, you are going to get some ridges, which are fine. Dad texture. But you do want it fairly thick because you want the alcohol inks to sort of bloom out. Like they would if you put it on a piece of Yupo or on photoglossy... Um, paper. So I've got my sanitizer on there so I'm just going to drip some and so you can see it is blooming. Now where there's not as much of that hand sanitizer we're not getting as much of a bloom. I'm going to use another shade of blue here. One thing about this is this will stay wet longer than acrylic paints do. Just about out of that color right there. I'll put that aside because I think I'm going to have to order some more of that. And let's try one other shade of blue. Okay, so I've got a lot of things going on here. So let's take a piece of cardstock and put it down. Now you can see it, it this cardstock is not a very thick cardstock and it's absorbing right through it, which isn't so bad well, unless you want to make double sided prints. Um, I can see where it's touching and 
that's probably a good thing. So let's pull it up. Oh yeah, definitely has a watercolor-like appeal to it. Now, let's quickly do a ghost print and see what we get. Now, not as much uh, of the hand sanitizers coming through because a lot of it went into that. The paper seems to absorb it um, very quickly. So I'm just rolling it down. So, but again, nice. That turned out fairly nice as well. Okay, so what will happen if I try to do some reactivation of this with a little bit of alcohol. I have 99% uh, rubbing alcohol in this little spray bottle and I'm not going to put any more color on here. I'm just going to spritz on top of that and see what kind of print we get this time. Now of course you can see the alcohol soaking through the paper. more subtle, but still got a print out of that. So actually out of one application of hand sanitizer and the alcohol inks, I was able to get three very different um, prints to show you here, compare them. So this was print number one, print number two, print number three, and they're all quite nice. So, and they all have that watercolor uh, effect. All right, so let's clean this up. Uh, let me grab a baby wipe. We'll just clean this up. Now, I'm wondering what this technique looks like when you do it on um, deli paper. Um, now, I've just run out of some cut sheets of deli paper so I'm just going to grab some and I'll be right back. So I've got some deli paper ready off to the side so I'm just going to put some more hand sanitizer on here. I'm going to have to get some more hand sanitizer. And I'm just spreading it out with my straight edge. Again you could use the brayer. Okay, let's take some new colors. And I'm just using these colors from the same family because I want to avoid making mud. Um, but I mean, get out your color wheel and check it out. I'm just too lazy to get out my color wheel. Okay, lots of ink on there at the moment. And when I say lots, you're not using that much out of the bottle. They'll go a long way from that. Um, she also used uh, re, uh, refills for Copic markers as well. And those seem to work very well. So here's my deli paper. And you can see it just beads right up on it. Well, that's a brilliant mess. That's really juicy. Let's uh, try a ghost print. Might not be as juicy. Still, looks pretty good though. Okay, there's my second print. Still pretty juicy. Let's take a third print. Getting a little lighter and I'm running out of space. But I still got stuff on there. So bear with me for a minute. I'm Having a little technical problem over on the other table. OK, 
Okay, let's take another sheet. This is my last sheet of deli paper that I cut, so let's see what we get from this. And yeah. So really, I got four poles, four prints from just that one application. Now, these are all very wet still, and probably I could add, drop a little bit of, um, see what happens if I drop some more alcohol ink onto these when they're still a little wet. Yeah, you see you'll get the blooming a little bit. So you can add to it. Now this one's been drying a little bit longer. I'm trying to get it in a shot here. Just see. So yeah, there's some areas on this that are a little drier than others, but so there, you can, another layer, dimension, just like that. Ooh, this one's really wet because these colors are really running right now together. And so I do have a little movement. I can play around here. That's kind of cool. Now, that won't work on the... Um, on the cardstock because cardstock absorbs this much quicker but because of the nature of deli paper having sort of a slick surface to it it's the alcohol inks and the hand sanitizer taking longer to dry so yeah lots of potential there now I've still got a little bit of um, color on here so I'm just going to take a piece of regular cardstock and see what I get from this and this will serve as a cleanup. Oops. Yeah. That came out really nice too. So, yeah. I mean, this has lots of potential. Um, I don't know how long these are going to take to dry. They shouldn't take that long. But there's one other technique I saw that I want to try. And that's where she, or she, when I say she, I mean joggles. Um, did the hand sanitizer, put on the alcohol ink, and then she put uh, white paint on top of that, white acrylic paint, and pulled a print. But I think what she did first was, before she put the white acrylic paint on, she took, pulled a print, then she let what the, the remaining stuff dry a little bit on it. Only a couple of minutes it took. And then put a layer of the titanium white on top of that and then pulled a print. So that's what I'm going to try next. We'll see how that works out. Okay, so this has sat here for about five minutes. And so it's relatively dry. And I'm going to put on my titanium white. I'm just going to brayer it over the top of it. I'm getting a little bleed through this, so I don't know how well this is going to work. Making this fairly thin, I'm taking some off with the brayer. And off to the side, I have a paper towel that I'm wiping it on. Now I'm going to take a print. Interesting effect. Very interesting effect. I'm going to do a ghost to see what I get. I'm going to have to review what was done with the white titanium paint, paint at uh, Joggle's YouTube because she did something and I don't think I'm doing it quite right. Or maybe I am. Actually, this one's coming out better. That came out better. So, really, I guess it will work, but I guess you have to use, uh, maybe I used too much of the titanium white on that one. Maybe put it on a little bit thinner, and because that came out much better. And just because I have a little rev, uh, residue left on here, I'm just going to do one more print to see what happens.
yeah, not as much. But okay, the second print I like better than the first print. So I guess the secret there is, is to put a very, very thin layer of, um, of the paint, of the acrylic paint down. And I may have let it dry a little too long. It's still wet here. I'm getting it on my hands. Um, maybe only let it dry for, you know, a couple of minutes. I, that, I went for about five minutes there. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, crap video. And uh, we did our little experiments with watercolors and with acrylic, or not acrylic, but with alcohol inks. And we used the hand sanitizers, the base with the alcohol inks, and you get some very interesting effects. So go ahead, play, have fun. What's the worst thing that can happen? You create crap. Eh, who cares? See you next time. Bye-bye. Just one little postscript here about this method. At the beginning, I mentioned, I think, whether or not uh, the hand sanitizer will dry or whether you have to like blot it or something like that. No, you don't have to blot it. It evaporates. It dries, just like the alcohol inks do. So don't blot it. Don't wipe it away. Just let it sit. And it doesn't take long. It's like maybe five minutes or so. Uh, mine, since I started at this, have been sitting there for about 10 minutes, 20 minutes. And they're perfectly dry now. So no worries there. So just thought I'd add that. See you later. Bye-bye.